sure In a world that's constantly changing How can I be sure I'll be sure with you Beware Beware of all that you hear there are so many people on this internet giving advice. You really have to screen these people thoroughly to find out if this person is an authority on the things that he is saying or if this person is just talking out of the middle of their bite. You really have to beware. You've got to concern yourself with who's speaking in your best interest and who's just saying something to get views and who's saying something that hasn't been corroborated by anybody. How can I be sure? especially in the manosphere. There are so many people out here giving misguided information, uh, MGTOW people, the black pill people, the people who are scared to talk to women, so they make every problem seem like it's a woman's fault people. You know, you have really got to be concerned with some of the information some of these young guys are absorbing from some of these so-called authorities in the manosphere. How can I be sure thing is, when people talk about New York, they talk about it with disparaging comments, and they make these disparaging comments in comparison to other cities. Oh, it's dirty and filthy, and there's all these poor people and homeless and so much trash. But what they don't understand is that the city is like that because of the amount of things that it has to deal with. I had a conversation with a person, and she took it to heart and disparaged New York City as much as she could, especially since we had this flooding that happened here two days ago, right? She took it upon herself and disparaged New York City as much as she could, and then she would she would extol you know, the pleasures of living in Charlotte, North Carolina, in Austin, Texas. But what she doesn't understand is, when all of these people move to Austin, Texas, which apparently doesn't have a lot of social networks set up for people who fail the system, they fail to participate and they fail to thrive, when these people move to Austin, and then they put a drain on the system in Austin, you'll see Austin will be just like New York City, when you have, you know, a lot of trash, because there won't be enough money to cover all of your public services, all right? When you have homeless people sleeping out on the street and everything because you won't have enough money to deal with this. Now, you know, you can say, oh, that'll never happen. Matter of fact, it'll happen more down south in the southern cities than it would in New York because why would you stay in New York if you're a homeless person if you can move out there to the west coast and you can move out there down south where the weather is always on your side? How That's how Los Angeles got more homeless people in New York. Because people found their way out there, and they really had no way of you know, being productive and participating in that local economy by a, by a variety of measures that we can't, you know, we can't talk about right here. But there's just more than five. There's more than drug addiction and bad luck and unemployment and mental illness. You know, there's a, that's only three. You know, just get out the prison system, or you could be a military veteran and you need you suffer from PSTD, PTSD. How can I? The thing is, of those five categories, you know, there's a combination of all of those things, and there might be even another five that I haven't even considered or spoken about. But the thing is, all of those people found themselves in California homeless. And why would they want to leave now? I mean, the weather's always on your side. Even when it's cold in Los Angeles, what's cold out there? 50 degrees? You know? 45 degrees? 40 degrees? It's not really cold if you're from the East Coast. You ask somebody if 40 degrees is cold, and they live in Philadelphia, they'll say, no, that's brisk. But, the, but, but that's the thing, you know? Places like Philadelphia and Newark, you know, they have all of these homeless people there because they've been shuffled in those places. Because those big cities, they can, when they have the services in place to deal with that, 
But it's also that the people in the smaller communities, they don't want those people in their area. They don't want, I don't want you in my burg. I don't want you in my, vill my village. So they'll get them a bus ticket or find some way of drumming them out of town. Dropping them on a the city line, you know? They'll drop those people on a city line and then, you know, have them find their own way downtown Philly or downtown Baltimore or somewhere in Washington, D.C. where they can ask for help. Now, people in the southern states, in the southern cities, they think, we don't have those problems. We're conservative. We don't have them. See, what they do is they blame the problem. How can I? They blame the problem on, on liberal social policies versus just people falling out of the system. It's those liberal ideas why you've got all those problems. Well, I can tell you, you can be as conservative as you want, but at some point you're going to develop liberal strategies too when all of these people show up in your city asking for help. Now, you know, it appears that a lot of people are leaving California and moving to Texas. They're moving to Austin, Texas, and Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas. And, you know, that's spectacular, man. You know, for the first time in the history of the country, Texas is losing people. That's bad. I mean, uh, California is losing people. That's bad for California. But that's good for the states that they move to. Because then those guys tend to be highly industrial and educated and willing to start their own businesses. But the problem is, they're moving to Austin, Texas, and they're buying houses for cash. Which means the people that live in Austin, they don't have a chance. Right? And the people that live in places, the neighborhoods that are going to get gentrified, they won't have a chance, and if they can't afford to live there, I mean, you know, you could say they can move further out and further out, but at some point, a lot of those people just going to get, you know, they're going to get excommunicated from that part of the system of buying real estate, of being a homeowner, buying a home to actually live in. And if they can't get an apartment, I mean, they won't, maybe they could, maybe they can't, but I'm just saying, at some point when these people fall through the cracks, your city is going to have to develop a program to deal with them, some type of social program. That's the thing that those people in those southern cities and those southern states, they don't, they don't talk about. They'll tell you, well, New Jersey's got a tax program, well, New Jersey offers a lot of social services for people. Well, Massachusetts is tax juices, but Massachusetts offers a lot of social services for people. A lot of public programs, got a system of great universities and colleges, you know? They offer a lot of programs, a lot of safeguards for people. You get down there and in, in Louisiana, and you don't offer that, well, there's the difference. That tells you the problem. That's why your state is full of poor people and Massachusetts isn't. You know? And then don't fool yourself. When these people show up en masse and they're sleeping on the street and they're sleeping on the buses and they're sleeping in the libraries, you know? You're going to have to devise some way of dealing with them. You'll see. People are going to wind up moving to Las Vegas because the weather's on their side. Why would you want to be homeless in Boston if you could be homeless in Vegas? The weather's always on your side, and you're going to have to find a way of dealing with those people. How can I? Why be homeless in Baltimore? Why don't we go down there to Austin? The weather's on your side. I mean, when you go to Miami and Fort Lauderdale, they do have a considerable population of homeless people. They also have, you know, not a lot of affordable housing anymore either. There's so many people from New York and New Jersey and Connecticut, Massachusetts, moving down to Florida that they've done the same thing that the people from California have done to Texas. But my point is, you can't make these disparaging comments about New York City being dead and the taxes are high and the crime and the dirt. There's going to be crime anywhere where the people come up short. There's going to be dirt anywhere when the city can't, you know, pay, it can't hire as many people as you want. 
because those people that you hire for your public service sector, they're going to want to live in wage. And that's the one thing you know you're not guaranteed in Texas yet. You can be right to work all you want, but when you have corrections officers, you know, prison guards in Massachusetts and in New Jersey, these guys start the job at $60,000 a year, 65, you know, a couple of years, they're making $80,000 a year, and you got a prison guard in the state of Texas, and guys is making $19,000 a year, you know, you get what you pay for. And at some point, those guys are going to either unionize, or you're going to have to find some way of paying them more money to get whatever you want to get done. That's all I'm saying. That when these the people, world, they speak with such authority on the internet, man, you have got to, you got to bleed some of these people out. And that's just this one conversation. Every time I get on this thing, there's always somebody talking about something he doesn't know about. Sure.